Well, we're going out for day trip in the van. Okay, we're going to go down to Orford Ness. But there we go. I'm parked up, so we're going on the ferry down to Orford Ness. Also, it's the return of this shirt, the shirt, the shirt, and the shorts, and the boots that I climbed Willie Gill as well. Hee <laughs> hee. Here we go, so here's the key to take us over to Orford Ness on the ferry, which is the only way you can get there. Plenty of boats in the harbour, and then over there is Orford Ness. So this is the largest vegetated shingle spit in Europe. Um, very important habitat, and are loads of environmental designations on it so it's a protected site you can't just land there so I couldn't go over in the kayak or anything like that it's gonna be quite interesting to go over and have a look to be honest okay so over there you can see the pagodas we're walking up um, having a little look at a better viewpoint. This bit's actually closed normally. We've got special permission um, to just come and come and stand here for a better look at the, at the site. So this is the only part of the site where you can see the entire yeah. atomic weapons research establishment with all the buildings in view. It's closed normally, obviously, for, for sensible reasons. Um, basically, it's a nesting area. We're just going to have a quick look then, we're going to pop back in here later and read everything, but this is uh, WE177. This is the only atomic bomb owned by the National Trust. There's a bit of surprise, a bit of PSP, didn't expect to see any of that. So Alison says to me, what's PSP? She whispered it, what's PSP? That is pierced steel plank or pierced steel oh. plate. I'm not sure. I think plank. It locks together, right? See these? Mm -hmm. This is where it locks into the next bit. It's an it's inter like to make yeah. a road or yeah. a runway. So in Normandy, the Allied landing grounds or advanced landing grounds, when they landed, they built the, um, the runways out of these. It came in a big roll and they just like unroll it. So down there, for example, and there you've got your runway. And that's PSP. And did you see it randomly here? It's pretty cool. And I'm not even sure if I've ever seen any before. Okay, so here's some of the curated decay. So, you know, these were only designed to last a couple of years or whatever. You know, they're not built with foundations. They're prefabricated, they're timber framed and so on. And there were hundreds and thousands of buildings on here. And why would you, why would you spend the money that it would take to keep all of these alive and, and pristine and new. You just can't, you can't. But to me this is tangible, this is more historic, this is more old feeling if you like. And I can look here, I can poke about and I can see the electrical fittings and you know there's like a light under there and the pipe work and you know a lot of this was vandalised before the trust got it and after the MOD had left scrap dealers would come down rip out all the metal and the, the copper here we go we've got some some wildlife coming because this is a nature reserve what are they pagodas in the background are they geese what are they? they're going to come over me or are they carry on down the river because the river is just behind that embankment see that river this is all underwater that's geese this is all underwater potentially, under sea level or river level, so at high tide. The banks burst, gone. They would dip down, wouldn't they? Typical. So that's really nice. So, so there's some more bases of buildings. And that's in there amongst the gorse. The shingle. Now this is a bit of a bit of a um, special habitat, so I'm not gonna be wandering off and looking at stuff. You know, there's some concrete bases there as well. It's just really nice, there's just this diversity 
But this is very much reminding me of Orkney with the the openness and the wind and the, the dereliction. There we go, old gate there. Road to nowhere now. This is one of the most secret places in the whole wide world at one point. There you go, that's the AWRE site we're looking down on, coming round Bailey Bridge. It's going to get windy in a second, sorry. There's a bomb ballistics building, so they were doing all the bomb testing, blowing stuff up and everything. We're coming over the river, we've got the lagoons built into the salt marshes, and in the back, you can see that big square building, that's Cobra Mist, surrounded by the towers. So this was used by the BBC World Service, by Radio Caroline, things like that. Um, it's all derelict now, it kind of needs to be pulled down, but it's full of asbestos, it's leaking, all that. But quite, quite, a, quite an interesting background to that. But it was only operational for a very, very short time. Those masts were, were part of it. So it was, it was over horizon radar that it was used for. I'm really sorry about the wind noise. I, can't, I just can't do anything about it. So they were looking at trains on the ground in Russia and so on, but it wasn't really very effective anyway, because the Russian trawlers out in the North Sea were blocking the signals and jamming the signals, I think, anyway. So, but, you know, it was a good idea at the time. The weird sort of feel to this is flat shingle. That's a bomb ballistics building. There's loads of concrete blocks for whatever reason. Bits of metal. strange not eerie but just a little bit it's a different landscape it's really difficult to judge distance I can't tell if that's 100 meters or five miles up there because it's so flat and so sparse but we're now at the bomb ballistics building there. I'm looking out of uh, an original metal framed window in the bomb ballistics building. So this was constructed in 1933. It was the nerve center of the experimental bombing range here on Orford. If we have a look through out of this window, this is a normal sort of panel of glass, but we're out of the wind now, so you can get a bit of a better idea. The shingle is kind of the same color and tone as, as the sea, which is Basically, if you look at the base of that building to the left, the sea comes up above that. Um, it's just this very strange landscape and all these bits. So I look down there in the centre and what you see, this is a jumble of crap, yeah? Well, this was a timing beacon array. This is from about 1943. That round structure in the centre held a powerful lamp. We had a shutter rotating around it, which allowed light to shine on the surrounding mirrors, which would be on the bases, in a set pattern. That was then recorded, centrally. A photograph taken by an aircraft at the moment of bomb release would include the particular arrangement of the lights reflected, which could be tallied with a paper tape record after the trial. So there you go. And of course I'm reading that off the board. So this is a metal tower on top of the ballistics building, and I'm literally standing here at the moment so if we have a look up you got the inside of that and out here this window overlooking the range so there's a metal turret I'm standing in just now down it's perfect circle of concrete no idea what for sweep over the floor shingle spit side bombing range so 
we're now at the base of that bit I mentioned before with the mirrors and so on. Now, you don't see this sort of thing every day. Danger! Unexploded ordnance! Please keep to the visitor route. You know Bush Push? No. What rhymes with bomb? <laughs> Here we go, so here's something round and unbuckled and what have you. Is it part of a bomb? An explosive device? Looks like, kind of like a miniature bouncing bomb. You know, like upkeep, but a smaller version. It could be, who knows? Now this is interesting, this is nothing to do with the testing. These lines and ridges, they're really, really vital habitats protected habitats because they were former shorelines you know so the shingle banks here that you can see are built up over centuries or decades or millennia or what have you as the sea has changed so that's restricted access to there and then here we've got the base of what was the lighthouse which was recently pulled down simply because it was a really dangerous structure it was derelict and it was on the point of collapse Looking along, so we've got collapsed buildings on the shoreline here as well. Obviously the, the lighthouse was there. How close it was to the sea. It was being held up with sandbags. Al found something, evidence of, of soldiers and the military. Whoa, it's windy. Evidence of the military presence on all the yes, So here we go, there's a large amount of PSP here that's laid. I'm hoping you can hear some of this. So it's all damaged in that, but there's obviously a track that was laid here that we can see. So can we actually see it interconnected? Or is it, is it corroded away too much? It doesn't really show. So here we go, you can see some of it went still in blocks, so we've got the bits there going through the holes, yeah? See how that's all connected together? Those are those bits I showed on the side earlier. So that is your PSP. Very clever. Yeah, so they put it in and that connects together. So they had massive rolls of it and they would roll it out to unravel a road or a runway. So they've had it's gone right up here and along. So here we go, we can see very clearly how it is linked in. So this is the black beacon, concrete hard standings, and the track goes down to the pagodas.